Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Western Stories, original air date. It comes from October 21st, 1947. It's going to be Studio One, and this title of this episode is going to be Singer Guns. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. This is Studio One at CBS. <laughs> Governor, Sheriff Karadak's going up into the hills all alone after that outlaw, Rhiannon. He sent you this note. Karadak's a fool to go after Rhiannon in his own country. He'll get himself killed. I can't afford to lose the best sheriff in the state. And listen to this. Dear Governor, think I've discovered where Rhiannon's been hiding out all this time. Maybe away a while. I'm going up Mount Laurel to find the singing guns. What's that crazy fool mean? I don't know, Governor. Whoever heard of singing guns? With a dramatic moment from Sing Guns by Max Brand, CBS invites you to Studio One, a full-hour Columbia feature production from the pages of the world's great storytellers. Stories known and loved by millions. And now to introduce tonight's great story, here is the director of Studio One, Fletcher Markle. Tonight, as you've surely guessed, we're heading out to the Wild West on a trail of hard-fisted, hard-riding, hard-shooting adventure. Singing Guns is about a sheriff and an outlaw and their strange friendship. As to the ways of the sheriff, they were somewhat extra-legal by modern standards. But then that was very like the Old West. Max Brand, who wrote the story, is probably familiar to you as the author of Destry Rides Again and the creator of Dr. Kildare. In fact, he's the author under his own and other names of more novels and stories than any writer since Alexander Dumas. Tonight, in Vincent McConnor's version for listening of Singing Guns, you'll be hearing Myron McCormick and Gary Merrill, who come to us respectively from the original Broadway casts of the hit plays State of the Union and Born Yesterday. Mr. McCormick is playing Rhiannon, the outlaw, and Mr. Merrill is Sheriff Karadak. Which way did they go? They went that way, partner. West. Sheriff Karadak had gone up Mount Laurel and found his man. As he sighted his rifle muzzle over the broad back of this man sitting peacefully, playing a mouth organ in the sun, Karadak realized there was no other man in the West like him. And for a moment, he hesitated. Then, almost automatically, Karadak raised his rifle and shifted his left foot a bit forward. Rhiannon! Rhiannon, don't draw your guns. I've come to take you in. that you keep saying about singing guns? Rhiannon. Well, looks like you come out of it at last. You, you brought me here to your cave. Yep, this is my hole in the wall. But you, you could have killed me where I fell. I don't never kill dead men. One thing I'd like to know, how you find me. A long time ago, I heard tell of a cave up here. The Indians told stories about it. I got to thinking I decided this is the only place you could hide. Do you like some food? Rhiannon, if I'd worked for a week and never ate nothing all that time, I'd only just begin to be as hungry as I am right now. What might you take a fancy to? If I had my pick, I'd kind of begin with some trout, grilled nice and brown. <laughs> I like a man who enjoys his vittles. 
You and me should have met up long ago, Karadek. Oh, so you know my name. Found it on a letter in your pocket. Sheriff Owen Karadak. Now you rest right here until I get back. Where are you off to? I'm fixing to catch us a mess of trout. Brianna, you sleep? Oh, just drowsing here in the sun. Me? I, I never felt so rested in all my life. Well, that means your wound is healed, Karadak. You're strong again. How long have I been here? Oh, ten days, maybe two weeks. We haven't done much talking, have we? Nothing much to talk about. Two men like each other, there's no need to talk about it. I come up here to arrest you and take you back to town. I kind of like it up here on Mount Laurel. How long have you been hiding here? More than two years. That's quite a spell. Yep, the winters get kind of long. It was an accident, I guess. What was? That trouble you had two years ago. Nope, that wasn't no accident. There was a gent from the mines. Liked to play cards. Always won. Everybody suspected he cheated. Only nobody'd accuse him of it, seeing as how he owned the mines. Always makes a difference who cheats you. Not to me. He tried it with me, and I accused him of having some extra cards. He grabbed a chair and whanged me on the head. I killed him. You shouldn't have run off to the hills. You should have waited and stood trial. Decided I wasn't fit to live around with people in a town. Not with my temper. They never would have done nothing to you for killing a thief. And in self-defense. I got mad. <laughs> I guess we're kind of polite, you and me. Only I'm a sheriff, and I can afford to get mad. You're an outlaw. When you want something, you just go down to the valley and hold up a stagecoach. I never held up no stagecoach. That the truth? On your oath? I swear it. I never held up nobody. Rhiannon, you got to come down to the valley. Are you planning to take me back, Sheriff? One way or another. Well, I guess they'd be waiting for me down there with open arms. And a rope. Folks know you by that name, Mane of Hair, you wear, blowing around your shoulders and by your beard. Suppose you clipped your hair and shaved clean. You'd be like another man. I could never leave Mount Laurel if that's what you're getting at. Why not? The air's as good and the water's as pure and the deer's as fat down in the valley. Who sent you up to get me? Nobody. It was my own idea, coming up here. You're the only outlaw left in these parts, Rhiannon. Sort of a blot in my record. And I'm going to take you down. Are you, Caraday? I am. Though nobody will know it but me. Rhiannon, I'm going to take you down and plant you. And you're going to grow. What kind of way are you talking? Friendly way. Like I said, you're a lot alike, you and me. You know, I've felt that ever since you come here. We both enjoy our vittles. We're not afraid of any man that walks. And I guess we're the two best shots in the whole state. Rhiannon of the Singing Guns. Why do you call them Singing Guns? There's an old Welsh saying. <laughs> you see, way back, my folks came from Wales. Mine, too. Well, sir, that's another way we're alike. What was this saying, Karadak, about the Singing Guns? It's one my grandpa used to say. It goes like this. There are three things that are seldom heard. An invitation to a feast from a miser. Wisdom from the mouth of a Saxon. And the song of the birds of Rhiannon. Who was this here other Rhiannon? That I never learned. But my grandpa said if you ever heard the singing of the birds of Rhiannon, you'd be frozen in silence for 80 years. Your birds are your guns. My singing guns. That's pretty good. Put your guns away, Rhiannon. Put them in that cage. Go cut your hair and shave off that beard. I'm going to take you down to the valley, and nobody will ever know it but me. You don't aim to put me in the jailhouse. I don't. I swear it. Here's my hand on it. I believe you, Karadak. And I'll come with you. You nearly finished? Yeah, hair cut and beard shaved. How do I look? I'll be dead blasted. I thought you was older than me. <laughs> I'm 25. Everybody thinks you're 40 or more. Nobody will know it's you. When are we starting down? Right away. We'll put out the campfire and... Oh, hold on. Yep. 
We got to get a new name for you. How about... How about John? John Gwynn. John Gwynn? Yeah, what do you think of that for a name? Why, it'll do fine. All right, John Gwynn. Let's saddle the horses and head down the valley. wrong, Sheriff? Nope. Just wanted to know what you think of this part of the valley. Good soft country. Man could get rich here. Yeah. But everywhere in this valley, there's people who'd like to put a noose around my neck. I don't know them, but they might know me. <laughs> they think that Rhiannon and the outlaw is a man of 45. You're just a sleepy-looking kid. They'll never recognize you. Oh, just one thing. Yeah, what's that? If you ever should run into any kind of trouble... Make for Mount Laurel and your hole in the wall. I'll come up to you up there. Remember that. I'll remember. What do you think of this old ranch up ahead? Yeah, it's got a look about it. I can smell the honeysuckle growing over the little house. Uh, it's just a run-down old shack. Could be fixed up mighty pretty. Sort of fits into my mind. Like I'd seen it before somewhere. How'd you like this place for your own? Me? Well, I know it ain't much. Well, I'd never ask for nothing better. Except a woman to put in it, maybe? You always got to ride ahead, don't you? <laughs> a few years back, Jim needed some money, and I let him have it. When he couldn't make good, I took this place in payment. And this is your place? Not anymore. Go on in and hang up your hat, kid. What? From now on, this is our place. Yours and mine. Fifty-fifty. Rhiannon, you're a farmer now. Charlie D. Yeah? My father owns the next ranch. What's your name? I'm called John Gwynn. Guess I ain't invited to come inside. Well, sure, get down and come on in. We've been aching to take a look at you. i watching what you've done to this old place here. Yeah? Sit down, have a smoke. Thanks. You bought this place from Sheriff Karadak, didn't you? Now, how would I be buying a place like this? Light? Yeah, thanks. Sheriff says it's your place. Uh, he wants to make me happy. Because you've done so much fixing the place up? Maybe. You want something here? No. The old man told me to see you and talk to you. Friendly fellow, my father. Ain't proud the way some people are. Rides the range just the same as anybody. Is that right? Ain't a calf fold on our ranch he don't know about. Not a twig sprouts in the spring that he don't see. No, sir. He watches everything. Told me to come over and see you. Well, now you've seen me. You're not much of a talker, are you? Only when I have something to say. You work in this place all by yourself? That's right. I should think you'd need a hired hand. Well, maybe later on. You married? Nope. Must be lonely here. Should think you'd need a wife even worse than a hired hand. I manage... I got a pretty sister. Name's Isabella. Nice name. You want to ride over and see her? Thanks. Don't like me, do you? I don't know you. Well, I'll tell Pa that I seen you. You do that. Good night, Mr... Uh, what was the name? Gwynn. Good night, Mr. Gwynn. Good night, Mr. D. someone riding this way. I've been listening to him for the last 30 seconds, Richards. Uh, go on with your work. I'll see who it is. Yes, sir. I'll have this finished in no time. 
Morning, Sheriff. Howdy, John. Whoa. Whoa there. Well, what brings you out here? I want to have a talk with you about... Who's that working your forge? My new hired man. Hired man? Who is he? Where'd he come from? I ain't asked him where he's from. Name is Richard. Come to the barn two days ago and asked for a job. No Richard's family in these parts? What was it you wanted to talk about? I heard Charlie D was by here last night. That's right. Old man D's got his eye on this place. He's watched what you've been doing here. Made me an offer. $400 an acre. Why, that's... That's more than $20,000. A lot more. You must want this place pretty bad. What did you tell him? I said nothing doing. I told him this was our place. Yours and mine. That's generous, Owen, but you could have hired somebody to fix this ranch up the same as I had. I could never hire any man to do the job you're doing here. Uh, what do you think of Charlie D? I think he's a right smart customer. And all those D's have brains, but Charlie's the smartest of the lot. He's his father's right hand. He didn't suspect who you are, did he? I don't see how he could. Well, I just want you to know, no matter what Charlie D says, we're not selling this place. Thanks, Karadak. Well, I'll be getting back to town. Oh, there's something I wanted to ask you. Well, what's that? Any idea who might be riding in the foothills every evening around dusk? Mm, couldn't tell you. Listen, it's Charlie D. Why? Well, every evening around sunset, a lone horseman rides through the foothills here. He stops for a spell as though he's watching this place, and then he rides on. How long has this been going on? Oh, maybe five nights. I plan to ride up there this evening and find out who it is. You be careful what you do. Sure, Karadak, I'll be careful. Quiet, boy, quiet. Hold on there. Well, I'll be a doggone son of a... It's a girl. Evening, ma'am. Don't come any closer, my friend. Well, I don't aim to do you any harm. What's on your mind? I reckon they sent you here. Well, who are they, ma'am? The D's. They sent you. I know they did. The D's? You tell them you didn't find me and I'll give you money. I'll give you a hundred dollars if you'll say you didn't see me. But I was just thinking you must be the D gal. Then you're not a D? Now, look here. I don't belong to the D family and I don't want your money. I come up here to find out who you are and why you're spying on me. On you? Oh, no. I'm watching the D Ranch. My name is John Gwynn. I'm Nancy Morgan. Does that name mean anything to you? No, ma'am. I can't say it does. Well, if I had another name, I wouldn't be here. The Morgans and the D's are enemies. Have been for generations. Anything I can do to help you, ma'am? Uh, what could one man do against all of them? Even if Rhiannon came down from the mountains to fight for me, it wouldn't help. Rhiannon? What do you know about Rhiannon? They say he's cruel and strong and terrible. But uh, they say he's never cruel to a woman. What would you be needing an outlaw like him for? Who else would break the law for me? I have to get something away from the D's. And who else but Rhiannon would dare to help me? What claim have the D's got against you? No claim. And they never will. They hate me like they hate every Morgan. But I'll never give up to them. Not while there's life in me. Good night, Don Gwen. Well, hey, come back here. Come back. Morning, Sheriff. Why, Rhiannon. Oh, Sheriff. My name is John Gwynn. You crazy fool. What are you doing in town? I had to talk with you, Karadak. Couldn't wait till you might be riding out to the ranch next. Anybody see you come into my office? Oh, nope. a lot of people in front of the courthouse. They didn't pay no attention to me. You in the sheriff's office. <laughs> I ought to put you in a cell. Well, go ahead if you want. I I didn't bring no guns with me. <laughs> Don't be a jackass. Sit down. Oh, thanks. What's so important you've ridden into town? Did you ever hear of a family in these parts... Name of Morgan? I sure did. Where do they live, these Morgans? They don't. There ain't no Morgans left. Not since the cattle war. What do you mean, there ain't any left? They're all planted in a row. 
boasted they had to be buried with their boots on, and they was. Who killed them? The D's. Who else? The D's? Well, the other day you led me to think they was respectable folks. What kind of folks was these Morgans? They was the kind that was best stayed away from. Cussing, shooting rascals, that's what they was. How do they look? Well, when I was a kid, I used to know a few of them. That was before the D's moved in and cleaned them all up. Yellow hair? That's right. Blue eyes? Every one of them. All looked alike. And they could ride like the devil, shoot like the devil, and lie like the devil. Well, they wouldn't even tell you the truth about the weather. And while they was lying, they'd smile a little at you out of the corner of their eyes. And you're certain they're all gone? Man, woman, and child. The D's were plenty thorough. They started at the top, and they went right on down to the bottom. Them was the days to be living in, kid. I just seen the sunset of them, the afterglow. <laughs> what are you smiling at? Uh, none of your business. Ah, uh, you better take a vacation, kid. Me? <laughs> when a man talks back to the sheriff and with a criminal record, it's time for him to take a little rest. Karadak, I've met a woman who says her name is Morgan. Morgan? That ain't possible. She has yellow hair and blue eyes. Her name is Nancy. Well, whoever she is, you keep away from her. She's the first woman I've seen in two years. She'll have you hanged, most like. Most like. Well, I'll get back to the ranch. Hold on. Where were you last night round about dusk? Up in the hills. That's just about when I met her. And that's when the overland stagecoach was held up between your ranch and town. Karadak, you ain't thinking that... I ain't thinking nothing. Folks here in town, they're saying it was Rhiannon held it up. But I tell you that Listen I... to me, John Gwynn. You go back to that ranch and stay there. And don't you ride into town again. Good shot, mister. Come out of that underbrush, whoever you are, and with your hands up. It's me, Rhiannon. Charlie D. You got that deer through the head with one shot. Never saw a farmer shoot like that before. It was a lucky shot. Was it? You know you're poaching, don't you? This here's D land. Yes, I know. What do you plan to do about it? I was joking about the poaching. We keep out everybody but our friends and neighbors. And you're our nearest neighbor. Am I? Matter of fact, I'm glad I ran into you. Pop wants to see you. Yes, about what? He didn't tell me. I'll help you skin that carcass, and then you can ride on home with me. That's a bargain. I've been wanting to meet your father for quite some time. Hey, Pop! I caught a poacher on our land. I'll have the rascal thrown in jail. Who the devil is he? John Gwynn. Well, John Gwynn, why don't you hunt on your own land? Don't pay no attention to Pop. He always carries on like this. Who are you talking about paying no attention to? You spindle-shafted half-man, you... This is John Gwynn, Pop. My father, Oliver D. I'm glad to see you, Gwynn. Thanks, sir. Charlie, um, you go water them horses while Gwynn and me has a little confab. Yes, sir. I'm going. Gwynn, I admire how you done up that old ranch over there. I've been by and admired to see it. I want to buy that place. What'd you sell it for? It ain't mine to sell. The sheriff, he owns it. Oh, he owned that place quite a few years. Never done nothing with it before. Then you come along and there's nothing in the valley to match with it. Well, how much? I tell you, the sheriff owns it. I only got an interest. How in big it. an interest? Well, half, I suppose. He let you do all that work and then only give you half interest? He's a skin plant. Every Welshman's a skin plant. I'm a Welshman, too, sir. Oh. Well, you let him beat you out. Ought to take a six-gun and go for him. He's robbed you. I never use a gun. Well, you killed that deer, didn't you? Lucky shot. Lucky shot. The world has gone to pot. Ain't no man anymore. But I can still shoot. See that bit of stick on top of that log? Yes, sir. Well, watch this. Oliver! Blasted, I missed. You nicked it, sir. That's good shooting. You wouldn't have missed a man. No. I never missed a Morgan. Oliver! Yes, Mrs. D. You stop that shooting right away. I got a headache. Yes, Mrs. D. And come in to Charles. This minute. We're coming. Now then, Gwen. 
Name your top figure for that ranch. There ain't none. Hmm. All right. I'll see the sheriff. He'll sell. Not if I don't want him to, and I don't. Anyway, you've already seen him, and he told you he wouldn't. Well, come along. We'll wash up. Mrs. D would give you tarnation if you came in the house with hands like that. Oh, I gotta be getting back to my place. Not till after chow. Now come along. <laughs> Right in here, Mr. Gwynn. You wash up, Mr. D. I did, Mrs. D. We got company for child. I know we have. This is, uh, John Gwynn. Well, come on in. Was it you started Mr. D to shooting? Well, I'm afraid it was, ma'am. I don't allow no guns around this house. The day's gone by for that nonsense. Now, come along and have some chow. Isabella! Where are you? Here I am, Mama. Oh, this here's John Gwynn. Has next ranch. You sit here beside me, Mr. Gwynn. No, no, sit across the table. You talk better. Thank you, ma'am. Isabella's just come home from school. She's been getting finished off. Isn't she pretty, like I told you? Charlie, you let your sister be. Sit down, everybody. Sit down. I've heard about your beautiful ranch, Mr. Gwynn. I want to come over and see it one day soon. Well, you'd be right welcome. Anytime. Here's your soup, Mr. Gwynn. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gwynn's a mighty handsome man. Ain't he, Bella? Of course he is. <laughs> You're making him blush. Young and handsome and set up in the world already with a fine ranch. <laughs> well, of all the outrageous talk... Let Papa ramble on. I don't care. Neither does Mr. Gwynn. Eh, when I was a girl, young people weren't so forward. More is the pity. Now, Bella and Gwen here will be like old friends before they're an hour older. Of course we will. Won't we, John Gwynn? Oh, yes, ma'am. I, I certainly hope so. Who is it? Who's there? It's me. Is that Nancy? Well, what are you... Why, Miss Isabella. In the moonlight, I thought... Who did you think it was? Who is this Nancy who comes riding to see you? Well, never mind about that. What are you doing here? There's been a hold-up down the valley. Oh, another one? Well, uh, how does that concern me? There's a posse riding from ranch to ranch asking questions. They've just been to our pl place, and now they're heading for here. Is the sheriff with them? Yeah. Sheriff Caradax, the one who's asking the questions. I slipped out the back way and rode across country through the foothills to get here ahead of them. But why? I came to see that they think it was Rhiannon. Rhiannon? Listen, they're coming. You think I'm Rhiannon, do you? Does it matter what I think? Yes, Miss Isabella, it matters quite a bit. All right, I'll tell you. It's gotten around what a good shot you are. Somebody saw you hunting. They said only five men in all of Arizona can shoot like that. Four of them are in jail. And the other? His name is Rhiannon. Is that you, John Gwynn? Yes, Sheriff. There's been a holdup in the valley. Two people killed. We think it's the outlaw, Rhiannon. Why did you come here? You're a stranger in these parts, Gwynn. We wanted to ask you a few questions. I'm listening. I've been sent down here from the governor's office to investigate that stagecoach holdup last week. How was Rhiannon, did it? Sure it was. The outlaw. Where are you from, Mr. Gwynn? Well, no place special. I've been sort of traveling around, working where I can find a job. And where were you tonight, about two hours ago? I was right here. Ain't been off the ranch since before sunset. Anyway, uh, proven that? Well, I... I was here, with him, all the time. Who are you, miss? Well, that's Miss D, Oliver's daughter. Even Miss Isabella. Good evening, Sheriff. Oh, we were just by your father's place, miss. Well, I'd better be getting home myself. Well, yeah, we'll ride on south to the next ranch. Come on, boys. Let's go. Good night, Miss D. Good night, sir. I'll ride out this way tomorrow, John Gwynn. All right, Sheriff. I'll be here. Miss Isabella? Yes, Sheriff. This your horse tied to the fence? Yes, Sheriff, it is. Seems like he's covered with sweat. Though somebody's been riding him hard. Recent. Well, good night, Miss D. He knew, but he didn't tell the others. 
Why did you say that you'd been here with me? You are Rhiannon, aren't you? Yes, Miss Isabella, I am. All right, Rhiannon, raise your hand. What? Who's that? Richards, my hired hand. Don't do nothing foolish, Rhiannon, or I might shoot the lady. I ain't aiming to. I've been hiding in the bushes listening to you, Rhiannon. Now I'm taking your horse, Miss. I'm getting away from here. All right, Richards, you find out who I am. But let me warn you, try to put me in jail. I'll find you and I'll break you in two. The boss that I work for don't want you in jail, Rhiannon. He can use you better out of jail. He's going to use you like an oxen yoke. He's going to work you and plow his field with you, Rhiannon. Well, I, I suppose there's no use going after him. I'll let him go. I'll catch up with him later on. How am I going to get home? I'll ride you back, Miss Isabella. I, uh... I still can't figure out why you did this for me. Can't you, Rhiannon? Well, you just think about it. Oh, yes, miss. I'll do that. I sure will. Studio One at CBS, you are listening to Singing Guns by Max Brand, as arranged for radio by Vincent McConnor. Our story will resume after the customary pause for local station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Continuing from Studio One at CBS. In future weeks, Studio One will be returning to the big cities and other more civilized areas for Christopher Morley's Kitty Foyle, Catherine Brush's Young Man of Manhattan, and Edna Ferber's So Big. But this week our scene is the badlands of the Old West. Now, part two of Singing Guns by Max Brand. Star tonight, Myron McCormick as Rhiannon and Gary Merrill as Sheriff Karadak. Oh, boy, well, there. Did you take the D-girl home and tuck her into bed? Well, you seem to know everything, including my name. I guess with all these hold-ups, everybody's beginning to suspect that your name is Rhiannon. I had nothing to do with them hold-ups. And now, ma'am, if you'll allow me, I'll ride on. Wait, Rhiannon. I've been here more than an hour waiting to speak with you. Well, go ahead. Remember I told you the other day there was only one person could help me? Rhiannon, the outlaw. I didn't know then that you were Rhiannon. You can help me and I can help you. I'm sorry, ma'am. The D's killed my people or drove them out of the state. Now, you've seen old Oliver D and his son. Yep, I've seen him. Well, you're free to enter their house and you can do something for me. You can get me something for that house. I couldn't do that, ma'am. You mean you won't help me? I wouldn't ever take nothing that didn't belong to me. That's fine talk for an outlaw. All right, Rhiannon. If you won't be my friend, you're my enemy. That's entirely up to you, ma'am. From this day on, you and me are enemies. The prettiest enemy I ever had, ma'am. Come on, get up. John Gwynn, where are you? Here, in the barn. Come on in. I just rode up and couldn't find you. What are you doing in here? Where's your hired man? Richard, so he run off last night in all that excitement. I'll keep an eye out on him for him in town. Aren't you early with your milking? Well, I'm doing it early so as I can ride over to the D place for chow. Isabella's a handsome girl, ain't she? Mighty handsome. I rode out here to warn you that the whole valley's riled up about that holdup yesterday. I figured that. They were mighty disappointed that the posse didn't bring nobody in last night. There's to be a meeting this evening in Courthouse Square. 
That should be right interesting. Some folks are saying that you're Rhiannon, that you ought to be brought into town and questioned. They think Rhiannon's guns might have been singing again. And what do you think? If I thought so, I'd be taking you back with me. Well? Enjoy yourself over at the D-Ranch. But if another posse comes riding out this way, maybe you'd better take to the hills. Go back to your hole in the wall. I couldn't do that. Why not? Because that would make me look guilty. No, Sheriff, I ain't going back to my hole in the wall. Not just yet. If I was you, I, I wouldn't take any guns over to the deep place. Whatever you say, Sheriff. Whatever you say. Tells me you've lost your hired hand, Mr. Gwynn. That's right, sir. He ran off last night. I'll keep telling Mr. D that he shouldn't hire every hand that comes riding out of nowhere asking for a job. Why isn't Charlie here? Well, I told your brother Chow was ready. He said he was going to wash up. Well, I'll heat his plate till he comes. Uh, John Gwynn, uh, I don't suppose you've changed your mind about selling that ranch. No, sir. I'll never change my mind about that. Well, I'll get it one way or another. Papa's only trying to intimidate you. You'll find out I don't scare. Uh, Billy, uh, why don't you fetch out your guitar after Chow and entertain your young man? Mr. D, you talk like you're aching and burning to get rid of my girl. Well, why shouldn't she <laughs> sing for John Gwynn? Bella's got the sweetest voice in these parts. I swear, any man with good hearing would enjoy listening to Bella sing. She's... she's got one of the... <laughs> that was gunfire! <laughs> Who is that screamed? You come for the yellow in the house. Now, Mr. D, no shooting, don't have it. Come along, John. What is it, Giant? Who are you shooting at? Somebody broke into the old wing of the house. Well, who was it? I couldn't see. It sounded like a woman scream. It seemed to be two men. They broke this window open. I heard a noise as I was washing up, so I run back this way in time to see the two of them making off into the underbrush. Come on, let's go after them. They had horses. I heard them right away after I shot at them. And you didn't recognize them? Oh, they were out of sight before I could get a look at their faces. Probably the same pair that pulled that hold up yesterday. Well, they didn't find nothing here. What's in that wing of your house? Just a few old trunks and boxes. Old trunks and boxes? Yeah, nothing really valuable. Hey, look here. Blood. You hit one of them. Yeah, and he's bleeding bad, too. Here's where the horses were tethered. You know, John Gwynn, I'm mighty glad you were having chow with us this evening. What do you mean? If you hadn't been, I might have thought this was your blood. No, I don't recollect losing any blood lately. Well, no point in telling the sheriff about this. Let's get back and finish our chow, and Mrs. D will be raising the roof. Come along. Who's that? Who is it? Well, Richards, what's happened? Ten paces. Ten. What do you say? Here, let me help you. Oh, you've been shot. You're wounded bad. And if you die here, everybody's going to think it was me that killed you. Rhiannon, I told you to stay away from town. Get your horse and come with me. What is it? Richards. Your hired hand? He come back in the middle of the night, half his chest shot away. I took him in, but he's dying. I want you there as witness in case he says anything. All right, I'll come. But we're in for trouble if anybody recognizes you as we ride through town. Can't. Can't. Is. What's he talking about? Well, I don't know. He, he's yeah. been saying that over and over ever since I found him. Who do you think shot him? Charlie D. Charlie? Why do you think that? Well, somebody tried to break into the empty wing of the D Ranch last yeah. night while I was there. Charlie tried to stop him. 
There was more than one of them? Charlie said he saw two. Two men. He hit one. We found a trail of blood to where they'd tethered their horses. And you think the one he shot was Richards? <laughs> Pieces. <laughs> well, I'll never learn nothing more from him. Ten paces. I wonder what that means. We better get him buried and out of sight before somebody starts asking questions. Questions? Anybody but me might think you was the one who killed him. Well, you're not thinking anything like that, are you? Nope. I think the guns are singing, but I don't think they're Rhiannon's guns. At least, not yet, I don't. We'll get Richards buried, then I'd better ride back to town. And I think I'll pay another visit over to the D Ranch. This time, maybe you'd better take your guns with you. Yes, Sheriff. I was already fixing to do that. Who's there? Miss Isabella? Oh, yeah, I'm back here, and you're here. But don't make a sound. What are you doing out here in the night? I heard a noise from this old wing of the house. When I came outside, I could see a flicker of light through these boarded-up windows. Somebody's got a candle lit in there. You can see it flickering through the cracks. It's Charlie. Your brother. Yeah, he's in there with a woman. A woman? She's got a gun. Why is he so still? He don't move. If you get close to the window, you can hear what they're saying. All I could make out was that she's trying to find out about a map or some sort of cave. Listen. I don't understand Besides, how do I know you're a Morgan like you say? Don't I have no look? Yes, you have. Handsome and mean. Sure. And that was some crack on the head I gave you, wasn't it? You were out cold for 20 minutes. All right. So now you've got me tied up and I can't move. Yeah. And I've got a gun. You know, your father was a no-good thief. Is that a fact, Mr. D? Whatever was crooked, he was good at. Including robbing stagecoaches. Think so, eh? Yeah, and I think something else. Like father, like daughter. You've been stopping some stagecoaches on your own. That coyote who left some of his blood behind when he hightailed out of here last night. Hmm, curious about my gentleman friend, Mr. D. Well, I'll tell you who he was. He was my husband. Calls himself Richards, among other names. We were here last night looking for a very interesting document. Yeah? It's a map we're at. It. We got one half of it last night out of one of those old storage trucks over there. Just where I thought it'd be. How'd it get here? I don't know anything about any map. Your father stole it from my family. But it was in two parts. I got a feeling the other half's around here someplace, too. I don't understand all this. What's the map for? It shows you how to get to the hiding place of quite a fortune, my friend. I've got the half of the map that shows how the stuff is hidden. It's some place called the Hole in the Wall. Now I want the part that shows me how to get there. You paid a plenty high price for the one half. Yeah, you shot Richards. But he was always clumsy. Last night he went off with a hole in his chest big enough to drive a stagecoach through. <laughs> Don't think I was devoted to the gent. He had no style. Not like Rhiannon. Is he dead? My husband? If he ain't, I'd be surprised. A little cold-blooded, ain't you? Yes, Mr. D. I'm cold-blooded. Really wouldn't care very much what happened to you, unless you tell me what I want to know. Where is this place called the Hole in the Wall? I've heard of it, but that's all. Mr. D., I don't have much sense of fun, so stop playing. Everybody's heard of the Hole in the Wall around here, but nobody knows where it is. You're lying. I'm counting ten, see, and then I'm ending the argument. I tell you, I don't know. Maybe you don't, or maybe you do. But if you don't, it's too bad. You see this gun? You hear me count. One, two, three. Three is far <laughs> enough, Nancy Morgan. Rihanna. Charlie, are you all right? Get out of here, Bella. This woman's crazy. Drop that gun. You got a chance. And if you take one more step, I'll shoot this man through the head. Rhiannon, she will. Drop your guns, Rhiannon, and fast. Well, suppose we make a little bargain. I don't need to bargain. Drop the guns. You want to find the hole in the wall, don't you? And I'm the only one who knows where it is. What's your proposition? You leave Charlie here with his sister. 
And I'll take you up Mount Laurel to the cave. You will? Matter of fact, I'm the only one can take you there. You see, that's where I've been hiding these past two years. Well, is it a bargain? It's a bargain. Drop your guns, both of them, and kick them over to me. Sure. Right. Now tie up the D girl and set her there against the wall alongside her brother. Rhiannon, you wouldn't. I'm afraid I got no choice, Miss Isabella. Charlie! I'm afraid there isn't much I can do tied up like this. Sit here, Miss Isabella. Oh, how could I ever have trusted you? Hurry up, Rhiannon. We gotta get up to Mount Laurel before dawn. I'm hurrying. This rope don't tie easy. Make those knots strong and put gags on them. I hope this won't hurt you, Miss Isabella. Tell the sheriff, come to a hole in the wall. He'll know. What was that you said to her? I was talking to myself. I said I hoped I could find the hole in the wall. Won't be easy in the dark. You'd better find it if you want to see another sunrise. And don't forget, this gun of mine's watching you. Come on. Let's head for Mount Laurel. Place is empty. Nobody's here. Reckon this proves this Rhiannon, the outlaw? It don't prove nothing, except that he ain't here. Karadek, I still think you know more about this John Gwynn than you're telling me. Where'd you meet him? Why'd you let him live here on your ranch? Right now, I'm not saying anything more, Mr. Nearon. The only road out here to ask John Gwynn a few questions. With no evidence against him. The fact that he ain't here don't mean a thing. Maybe he's over visiting his neighbors. All right. Let's ride over at the D-Ranch. We're riding over at the D-Ranch. The D-Ranch. The D-Ranch. Rhiannon. Yes, what is it? Whoa, boy. How much further do we have to ride? Well, I ain't sure, ma'am. Mighty confusing in the dark, especially with you behind me with a gun. Uh, by the way, ma'am, your uh, husband's plumb dead. I know that. He was a fool. Well, who married him? Anything else you'd like to know, ma'am? Ray Allen, if you try to trick me, I'll kill you. I'm sure you will, ma'am. All right, then. I'm right behind you. <laughs> Sheriff? Yes, Mr. D. I've got Mr. Nearin with me from the governor's office. Mr. Nearin, eh? Has John Gwynn been here, your neighbor? He sure has. Only his name isn't John Gwynn. Charlie, no, don't. What's that you say? His name's Rhiannon. I know it. Where is he? he? Tied up my sister and rode off with a woman who calls herself Morgan. Morgan? Then he was right. Well, Rhiannon's taken her up on Mount Laurel. He whispered in my ear, Sheriff. He said for you to come to the hole in the wall. The hole in the wall? That's Rhiannon's hideout. We'll all go up there. Come on, Sheriff. You better lead the way. Oh, I will. All right, ma'am. This is it. I warn you, Rhiannon. If this is a trick. I'm in no position for tricks, ma'am. You and that big gun. You wanted to find a hole in the wall? Well, it's just around these rocks. Can I help you down? Keep away from me. I can manage myself. You're the most trusting female I ever met. I'm a Morgan, and a Morgan never trusts anybody. All right, you lead the way. Uh, watch your step on these rocks. They're kind of slippery near the waterfall. You know, it's funny they didn't mark on that map where the hole in the wall was located. Every Morgan knew where the cave was in the old days. But only my father and my uncle knew what was hidden inside. What is inside? You'll see in time. You know, it's a funny thing. I hid out in the cave for two years, but I never knew nothing else was hidden there. Uh, take my hand. It's some other time, my friend. I ain't trying no funny business. We have to duck under this waterfall. That's where the entrance to the hole in the wall's hid. That's why nobody ever found it. Now, if you don't take my hand, you might slip and fall, and there's a drop here, straight down, or maybe a hundred feet. Take my hand. My left hand. 
Then I can still aim my gun at you. Suit yourself. Hold tight now. find the landmarks he gave me. Oh, if only the sun had come up. How many hours is it to dawn? Not long now. All right, we'll turn left. Welcome to the hole in the wall, Miss Morgan. Can you strike a light? Well, certainly, ma'am. Here we are. Seems to me I left a candle here. Oh, yes, here it is. Well, this is like coming home. Sorry you ain't got no chairs or I'd ask you to sit down. You sit down, over there. I want to take a look at this map. You handle that gun mighty lovingly, ma'am. Sit down. I'm a settle. Now then, let's see. Ten paces from the mouth of the cave. Oh, no, that won't work. Five paces to the right takes me into the middle of the cave. Well, maybe it means five paces to the left. Doesn't it say? The map reads ten paces in from the entrance. That's along this wall. Then five right. Oh, that's out into the center again. Maybe those first ten paces shouldn't be against the wall. Maybe they're straight into the cave. I'll try it. You stay where you are. I ain't moving a foot. All right. Now I take ten paces into the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, five paces to the right. One, two, three, four, five. You're right against the wall. The map says pull down the third stone from the floor. Well, that must be this one. <laughs> oh, I can't move it. Want me to try? Yes. Come over here. But watch yourself. Never trusted anybody in your life, did you, man? Uh, when are you going to tell me what's hidden behind this stone? You'll see it in a minute. The Morgans hid a fortune here. The gold dust they took from a lot of stagecoach holdups back in the good days. Hmm. The good days before Sheriff Karadak, eh? <sighs> Maybe a million dollars. And every bit of it's mine. It ain't hardly worth holding up a stagecoach nowadays. To think that I slept here for two years next to all this. Go ahead. Pull on the rock. The sharp one. Yes, ma'am. But hadn't you better stand back just to be safe? I'll stand right here. Now go ahead. Pull the rock away. Whatever you say. Stand back. Let me see inside. Well, there's some sort of a chain with an iron ring on it. Shall I give it a yank? I'll do it. Get away. Way over there. I don't aim to touch your precious treasure. Stand back against that wall. I'm as far as I can get without going outside. All right. Now I'll pull the ring. You're about to see the Morgan fortune, my friend. And it's mine. Get back! Charlie taking so long in the governor's office. Hey, long. He's been in there no more than ten minutes. Oh, Sheriff, we've got to save Rhiannon. They can't keep him in jail. All right, Sheriff. The governor wants to see you again. Yes, Mr. Neer. This time you can bring Miss D with you. Oh, thank you. Then I'm mighty glad that we aren't in for another period of feuding between the D's and the Morgans. Come in, Sheriff. Pull up a chair. Yes, sir. Sit here, Miss D. Thank you, sir. Charlie, what's happened? Sit down, Bella. The governor will tell you. Well, it seems that the woman who died in the cave, the hole in the wall, was indeed a descendant of the Morgan family. We've already had people identify her as one of the persons who held up the stage and killed two people on the Willits Ranch last week. The second one, her husband, is the man you helped bury out on your ranch, Sheriff. Yes, sir. Those Morgans were rascals right up to the end. They fixed that wall so that whoever pulled the ring would be killed by a pile of rock. <laughs> 
And I suppose they hoped someone from the D family had pulled that ring. Very likely. <laughs> Mighty ironic that their little device killed the last of the Morgans. And now, Sheriff, I want to know why you didn't arrest the outlaw, Rhiannon, when you first found him. Well, sir, he saved my life up on Mount Laurel. In the days that followed, I got to know Rhiannon pretty well. I knew then, sir, that he was no outlaw. We have courts to make such decisions, Sheriff. But, Governor... You're a lucky man, Karadak. Facts prove that you were right. We have every reason to believe that Rianne is an innocent man, that he never held up any stagecoach. You mean he can be released? Now, hold on, miss. I didn't say that. You see, there's another charge against him. Two years ago, he killed a man. That was in self-defense. Well, we have to go into that. Meanwhile, he must remain in his cell. Could I see him, please? Of course, Miss D. Niren, you take her over to the jail. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. I have a few more questions I want to ask your brother and Sheriff Carradine. Miss, you can go ahead by yourself right down this corridor. Thank you, Mr. Nearing. He's in the last cell. Rhiannon? Miss Isabella. Hi. I've been sitting here thinking about you. I've just come from the governor. They found out you didn't have any connection with those holdups. Well, why don't they let me out of this old jailhouse? I'm sorry, they they won't let you out yet. It seems two years ago... I know. I killed a man. The governor says you have to stand trial for it. I shot him in self-defense. I told Sheriff Karadak the facts. Fellow tried to cheat me at cards. When I accused him of it, he struck me with a chair and... Rihanna! Made... Rihanna! Look at this! It's the sheriff. Karadak, what is it? You see this paper? You're a free man. What? This young lady and me, we convinced the governor that you're a law-abiding citizen. I told him the facts about that fella cheating you two years ago and how you shot him in self-defense. This here's your part. You're a free man. Oh, Rhiannon. Only one thing. What's that, Karadak? You gotta promise me that you'll put those guns of yours away in a cage. They won't do no more singing. Never again. It's a promise. Now then, I'll get you out of here. Give me the key to this cell. Gus, where's the key to this cell? What did he mean about your singing guns? Well, that's some sort of an old Welsh legend. Kind of a joke between the sheriff and me. Well, there's something you've got to promise me, Rhiannon. Before you get out of this cell. I'm in a promising mood, man. I play the guitar right well. Is that a fact? I know Mama would say I'm being very forward. Well, she ain't here to say it. Rhiannon, you've got to promise me that any singing you do in the future, you'll do it with me. Yes, ma'am, I'm looking forward to that. Only one thing I don't like. Yes? Looks like your pa is finally going to get my ranch. By marriage. From Studio One at CBS, you have just heard Fletcher Markle's production of Singing Guns by Max Brand. Another full-hour Columbia feature from the pages of the world's great storytellers. Tonight's script was prepared especially for this series by Vincent McConnor, and the original musical score was composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Now again, Mr. Markle. May a producer present the principals in our cast tonight. As outlaw and sheriff, Rhiannon, was played by Mon McCormick. And Karadek was Gary Merrill. Nancy Morgan. Was played by Jean Sincere. Isabella. Was Ann Burr. Charlie. Was played by Frank Butler. In active support, you heard Miriam Wolfe, Gregory Morton, Hedley Rennie, John Merlin, Robert Dryden, Louis Quinn, and Clyde North. Next week, for one occasion only, we turn over our Studio One Hour to the CBS documentary unit and their newest production, Fear Begins at Forty. Two weeks from tonight, Studio One returns with a new version for listening of Christopher Morley's bestseller, Kitty Foyle. It's a very wonderful story, and we hope you'll be with us. Now, until two weeks from tonight, until Kitty Foyle, this is Fletcher Markle. Well, good night and thank you from all of us in Studio One.
repeat a special message for Studio One listeners. Next week, for one week only, this time will be occupied by a new CBS documentary, Fear Begins at 40. The regular Studio One schedule will resume at the same time the week following. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.